I'm sorry I called you. I only wanted to tell Amanda that I love her. I know. I know. And they should have let you, but I shouldn't have called. I mean, the crisis is over. She's fine. And if I had just waited, then you wouldn't be in all this trouble. I'm glad you didn't wait. I don't care how much trouble I'm in. I just had to make sure Amanda was safe. You're one of the few people who understands how I feel. Maybe the only person. And Pierce. Other people are starting to come around, too, you know? Miss Fargate and, and even Brooke. I have been calling all over town looking for you. We have to talk. Hi, Mr. Chandler. Alone. Go on. I'll be okay. Are you sure? I can take care of myself. Laura, thanks for everything. I love you. Mm. Bye, sweetie. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Where in the devil are Brooke and Pierce? Oh, probably halfway to Mount Evangeline by now, I'd say. Unless they're already there, sipping brandy in front of a fire. Why didn't you go with them? My daughter's sick. She needed me. So you let them go up there alone? I tried to stop them. Why didn't you throw yourself in front of the car? Do I look happy, Adam? I'm not. Damn. Oh, we're definitely stuck. You know what? Why don't you stay in the car? I saw a gas station open that village about eight miles back. Oh, we'll hike no. Back it's and... too cold and it's too far. Listen, there's a closer place. It's about a quarter of a mile well, from here. Are you up for a little walk? Well, what kind of a place are you talking about? Well, it's a, it's a surprise. Come on, come on, okay? Let's uh, go. It's cold. Okay. Oh. oh, good. Here. Let me get the light. Whoa. Oh, thank you, Adam. This is Adam's cabin? Yes, all 200 hand-cut logs, including the key under the granite slab. <sighs> I am so glad he didn't move the key. Yeah, right? It's a nice place. Yeah, it is. Actually, when we were married, we, we used to use it as a getaway. Oh, good, there's wood. I'll, uh, I'll get a fire going. All right, listen, um, I'm going to see if there's anything to eat. Okay. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, I was just thinking about, I think our missing host would be rather nervous, don't you think? Nervous about what? Nervous about you and me. We're together and it's a stormy night alone and we're in his mountain cabin. <laughs> Thanks to you, Brooke and Pierce are on their way to a romantic ski resort all by themselves. The situation was out of my control, Adam. You're such a waste. I tried. You didn't try hard enough. I told Pierce Laura was having a crisis and I had to take care of her. Laura? What, an outbreak of acne? How gripping. Pierce cares for Laura very deeply. Why am I explaining myself to you? Because I asked. Okay, I'll give you the straight stuff, Chandler. The reason I'm not chaperoning Pierce and Brooke is that my baby girl is hospitalized. Oh, you and your little baby girl. Amanda doesn't even know you exist. It doesn't matter. That's really pathetic. Using that little girl as an excuse, you were afraid to go up there. That's what it is. You were afraid you'd turn into the third wheel. You are so wrong. The humiliation finally got to you, didn't it, Janet? You were good enough to sleep with until the hermit saw what civilization had to offer. Pierce would never treat me like that. Oh, really? Where is he? There's a breakfast reception that couldn't be postponed. They had to leave for Mount Evangeline tonight. Oh, you're in such denial. Pierce is not Picasso. The Lodge is not the Louvre. Brooke and Pierce made a commitment. It just couldn't wait. They just couldn't wait to be alone together. Wake up, Janet. Smell the champagne. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going to Mount Evangeline. How are you going to explain your sudden appearance, love of art? Love of Brooke. Oh, honest and true. Exactly. And you think that's going to win the day? Yes, I do. What if it ticks Brooke off? What if it makes her do exactly what you're afraid of, Adam? Go ahead, fly up there. Push her into Pierce's arms. Janet. Dr. Martin, is Amanda okay? Amanda's fine. Look, I have received more complaints about your being here. I must ask you to leave. Leave? Now. Well, I admire a man who can build a good fire. 
Well, good. You're thawing out. Are you hungry? Not yet. No? Hmm. Not after that hike through the tundra? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm kind of used to it. Got the hike, that is. Uh. Well, can I tempt you with something? Some, um, canned venison stew or some chili or some caviar? <laughs> caviar? Mm-hmm. Uh. Yes. One can't rough it without fish eggs and Dom Perignon, can one? I know where Adam stashes all the goodies. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Crystal and caviar and champagne, all the simplicities of home, if you're Adam Chandler. Yeah, the world is his oyster. And what are we? Not the pearls. <laughs> <laughs> so how often does he uh, use this place? Oh, you know, I don't think he's been here since uh, he staged his own kidnapping. Come again? Oh, believe me, it would take more than one sn snowy night marooned in a mountain cabin to give you all the details of that one, <laughs> really. <laughs> so he staged his own kidnapping to what, win you back or something? Oh, no, no, it was, um, it was to test the love and loyalty of his most recent wife, ex-wife, Gloria Marsh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, so this, uh, problem with jealousy has been a lifelong problem. <sighs> well... As long as I've known him. Hmm. You know, I wish I could laugh things off like you do. But, uh, Janet's always so serious. You know why I think I can do that? Because I cleared the deck when I turned down Adam's marriage proposal. But, you know, you're living with someone who's insecure about the relationship, and I think it makes it very difficult. Yeah. Listen, let's leave Janet and Adam to the shrinks, okay? We have tons of champagne, we have lots of wonderful treats, and neither one of them have any reason to be jealous or to be insecure. I mean, you know, you and I, we're friends. It's not like we're on some moonlit cruise in the Caribbean. <laughs> Refill? And Kenny had the dreamiest brown eyes I had ever seen. Kenny. Kenny, they, they, was that your Aunt Phoebe's pool cleaner? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every Thursday, 1130. <laughs> oh, I used to study his every move. I had a romance novel going for myself. Oh, did you? Uh-huh. Mm. Anyway, this one Thursday, 1125. I hear his, he had this green pickup truck, super cab, V8. He pulls into the driveway. I jump into the pool. <laughs> and I go into my routine as soon as I hear, hear his engine stop. And <clears throat> you know how when people drown, they usually go down three times? Yeah. <laughs> well, I went down six. <laughs> and I'm spluttering and I'm thrashing around and I'm swallowing water. <laughs> and Kenny does this, you know, jackknife into the pool. His muscles are rippling, and he pulls me out, and he lays me down, and he's just about to begin mouth to mouth, and my Aunt Phoebe comes out, and she goes, she begs to be allowed to save my life. That must have instantly revived you. Immediately. I revived immediately. She'd been watching from her bedroom window. I was grounded for two weeks. Uh, that's why he left, isn't it? Yes. Oh, poor Kenny. No, and then, well, that was when we got, um, maybe you don't remember, um, we had that lady pool cleaner. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that was the end of my aquatic theatrics. Mm. But not the, uh, crushes. No, no. I, I must have had, oh, a dozen crushes. Mm. <laughs> so, how did I miss you? Oh, I, uh, I was trying to be the invisible gardener that summer. The invisible gardener? Mm-hmm. Sounds like sci-fi more than a romance novel. <laughs> yeah. Invisible Gardener. Mm. So what about you? You must have had a crush at some point in your life? Nope. No? Not even uh, an infatuation? No. Nope. Puppy love? I did uh, 
fall in love at first sight once. Well, that's the stuff that um, is made then to great romance. Mm -hmm. So, what was that like? Uh, it's kind of indescribable. Almost uh, spiritual. Like how? You know, I've never tried to put it into words. It was, uh, it was kind of like coming home, you know, to someone that you'd known before. It was uh, complete. It was warm, and safe, and passionate, and happy. That's how it should be. You know, no anxiety or no games. It's just like sort of a filling up of your soul. It's wonderful. Yeah. 